Ah, the F1 paddock. A place of peace and reason. Where people band together in support. And where all the drivers on the grid live in harmony. Yeah. He'd love to think so. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes the drivers of Formula One will not exactly see eye to eye with each other, sometimes to a more extreme degree. And in this video, I'll introduce you to part some of these fisticuffs. Oh boy, where to start? Where to start? Well. Now, 1976 champion James Hunt was known for a lot of things, but his exuberance and somewhat surprisingly serious approach to racing meant that he was the wrong man to cross if his race came to a premature end. And this was something that carried over into his Formula One career. But for some reason, the cameras only really captured the times where he was swinging fists at trackside marshals, like this one here in the 1975 Monaco Grand Prix, where James does look like he's been whacked out on one too many shrooms. Then there was that time where he crashed out of the 1977 Canadian Grand Prix. When a track marshal tried to usher him to safety, he repaid this gesture by punching him. Before eventually realizing that that wasn't a very nice thing to do. Still, could have been worse. A few years after this, at the 1982 Canadian Grand Prix, a Brazilian driver by the name of Chico Serra is on his last push lap to try and qualify for the race. Given that only 26 drivers will be able to start the race, and that his best lap time up to that point was only good enough for 29th and last in the order, the only thing this was going to secure him was his plane ticket home. So this last lap of his had to be a good one. But unfortunately, this was news that either wasn't relayed or cared about by another Brazilian just ahead of him by the name of Raul Boy Sal. Boisel was good enough to qualify for the race, and so when he saw the Williams of KK Rosberg scream up behind his gearbox, he waved him by, and then blocked the Fittipaldi of Chico Serra, ruining his lap and denying Serra a start in the Grand Prix. Understandably dejected, Chico ran down the pit lane to Boisel to voice his displeasure. The voice soon turned into a slap. Boisel kicked him in retaliation, and before you knew it, half the damn paddock joined in a brawl on a weekend that would ultimately turn out to be tragic. Boisel did denied that the blocking was intentional, but even if it was, this was a little bit over the top from Sarah, it must be said. But for all we know, Boisel could have just had a case of bad breath. By the way, a little bit of side trivia here. The race that weekend was won by reigning world champion Nelson Piquet, who, while a fantastic driver, left a lot to be desired as a human being. So does he have a fracker story? <laughs> yeah, you bet your ass he does. Here in Hockenheim, PK was romping away to victory in the German Grand Prix in his Brabham. After a season of largely bad luck, this was exactly what PK needed. And for the team, this was also great news. The Brabham cars that year were running BMW engines, and key BMW figureheads were in the crowd, watching their engines power the race-winning cars in their home Grand Prix. It was all going well until PK came across a Batmarker ATS being driven by Chilean driver Aliseo Salazar. Heading into the chicane at the top of the circuit, PK went to lap Salazar, who was bamboozled by all of this. And when they came upon the chicane, Salazar's brain shut down. He clipped the rear of Piquet's Brabham and took them both out of the race. Now, a normal driver might curse at him, jump over the guardrail, and walk back to the pits in a fit of rage. But this is Nelson Piquet, and he's not normal. This was a low point for Piquet's F1 career. But for Eliseo Salazar, this was perhaps the only thing to remind us that he ever raced in F1 at all. If there was any consolation, it's that the BMW engine in Piquet's car was about to expire anyway, even if Salazar didn't hit him. So, in being incompetent, Salazar saved BMW and Brabham some amount of embarrassment. Mission failed. Successfully. So, two fights that were instigated by a Brazilian driver. You want to hear the story of the third one? Yeah, thought so. It's a typical day in mid-1980s Formula One. Ayrton Senna is doing his best to win the race in a car that does not deserve to win the race. Sure, Lotus was a champion team, very influential in the days where it was led by Sir Colin Chapman, but them days were long over. Now it was Williams who was the new king of the yard and were producing rocket ships year after year. And here on the first lap of the 1987 Belgian Grand Prix, the pace of the Williams proved too much. All this is very weird to say Monday context and Nigel Mansell drew alongside to take the lead. But as the Brummy Mammoth started to get ahead, Senna decided to employ the crab mentality of, if I can't have it, then you can't either. He drop kicked them both out of the race. 
Bummer. When they both got back to the pits, Mansell calmly took Senna by the collar, calmly threw him against the wall, and said, Next time you do that, you're gonna have to do a much better job. Ayrton rightly drew the conclusion that when a man holds you around the throat, I do not think he has come to apologize. This is the traditional pose of apology. Well, maybe not all the time. Senna punched Mansell a few times in retaliation. Not so sure I agree on that one, but eventually the air was cleared, and that was the last time that Senna and Mansell would engage in unsanctioned boxing matches. But it wouldn't be the last time that Ayrton Senna would go around smacking people. A few years later, at the 1993 Japanese Grand Prix, Senna was putting in his usual champion caliber drive that defied everything that was possible. Same old, nothing special. At least, by his standards. As the race went on, he began to lap multiple cars. Again, nothing new. One of those cars, however, was a Jordan, being driven by someone who was new. The Irish hair magnate, Eddie Irvine. Irvine was in his debut race here, and despite being in a not-so-fast car and suffering from chronic back pain, was on course to score points. Which, when you think about it, back then was a remarkable feat. For now, however, he was staring at Senna's gearbox, the McLaren having just put him a lap down. But when he saw him struggle to put the Williams of Damon Hill a lap down, Irvine decided, You know what? I can take him. He unlapped himself, passing Senna around the outside and invoking the same reaction as if someone had just thrown a tomato at the Pope. The, the goal of the man! The back and forth continued for a few laps before Senna eventually snapped out of his rut, ran away and crossed the line to win the Grand Prix. He got his trophy, thanked the fans and went home. Ha! <laughs> You know there's more to the story, eh? Okay, okay. So, after the race, Senna was watching TV with his friend, Gerhard Berger. What they were watching specifically was the battle that Senna had with Irvine. Now, Berger loved to joke around with people, especially his friends, and he knew now was a prime opportunity to stir some sh**. Gee, Eddie did a good job today, huh? But was it he that blocked you? I'd be so embarrassed if I got passed around the outside by a rookie in a bad car. Y are you embarrassed? It was then that Senna's eyes flooded with rage, and he began to trudge toward the Jordan unit. He barged in and began to launch a verbal tirade at Irvine, who shrugged it off coolly. The coolness was lost, however, when Senna punched Irvine and knocked him off the table, a punch that Berger to this day still takes some amount of credit for. Eventually, Ayrton conceded that these actions were unacceptable, and he was given a suspended two-race ban. The irony was that up until that point, Senna was Irvine's favorite driver growing up, but now that that had happened, his new favorite F1 driver was himself, I guess? As shocking as it may seem to some, Irvine would not get himself into another fight in the paddock again. His teammate, however, Whilst leading the 1998 Belgian Grand Prix, the Ferrari of Michael Schumacher came upon a slow moving McLaren being driven by David Coulthard. He was set to put him a lap down, but it all went wrong. Despite the Ferrari displaying some extraordinary balance with only three wheels on the wagon, this collision meant that Shumi was knocked out of the Grand Prix. And when he saw Coulthard pull into his garage at McLaren, he decided to go down and knock his teeth out. Restrained by his engineers, Shumi angrily asked Coulthard if he was trying to kill him and accused him of attempting to skew the championship in favor of his teammate, Mika Hakkinen. I must be honest, that was a very brave thing to do on the part of Shumi because as legendary as he is, no amount of legend is gonna stop your hand being broken when trying to punch the jaw of jaws. They eventually reconciled after this, and for a while, not much did happen in the F1 paddock, apart from the occasional swearing and the hat throwing and helmet slapping, I guess, if you even want to call this a fight. The last noticeable one, arguably, took place at the 2018 Brazilian Grand Prix. Max Verstappen was charging to victory, a sentence that back then was greatly cheered, but now provokes a sense of dread. It was all going well until lap 44, which is a little ironic in hindsight. The Force India of Esteban Ocon was getting a little bit itchy behind Max, despite being a lap behind him. At the Senna S, he decided to unlap himself, only to cannon into the side of Verstappen, spinning him around, handing the lead and eventual race win to Lewis Hamilton. Ocon was given a 10 second stop go penalty, which is A, not surprising, and B, not new, either. But when he turned up to the pit lane after the race, what happened there was pretty new. At least in his world, Max pushed and shoved him multiple times, placing full blame at the Frenchman. This wasn't warmly received by Ocon, the motor racing fan base, or especially the FIA, who punished him with two days community service. 
So there we have it. Sure, there have been moments not captured by the cameras, some fisticuffs swept under the rug politically, and some that took place outside of the track grounds. So when will the next fight be in the paddock? Will there even be one at all? Did Liechtenstein's only F1 driver really quit the sport to become a monk in a secluded part of Thailand? These are life's little questions that we sometimes will never know the answers to, and probably don't deserve either. What's my take on it all? Well, I guess when life gives you lemons, just make sure that you don't be a manus. And I'll see you all later.